of the walkabouts in Windsor, dominating the morning's front pages. I'm joined now by Royal Historian Tessa Dunlop and Political Editor at the Sunday Mirror, Nigel Nelson, for, for a look at the papers. And we, we dealt with those front pages in some depth in the last hour. A lot of them had the... The two brothers, the, the grandsons of the Queen, of course, doing their walkabout um, in Windsor yesterday with their wives. But we're delving inside the papers now, aren't we? And Nigel, you want to kick us off with, a, with an article that you've seen in The Observer focusing on the new era of, of King Charles. And the new, yes, and, and the difference between Prince Charles and King Charles. Um, he, he gave a sort of a slight impression yesterday he's going to uphold the Constitution. And of course, that means he's going to be a completely different person. If you go back to his uh, Prince of Wales days, he got involved involved in an awful lot of politics. He was very keen on climate change, dealing with pollution, uh, getting up good opportunities for young people, and also uh, having a go at architecture he didn't like. All that changes. Monstrous carbuncles. That's right, in, in, indeed. Um, and so he used to send prime ministers uh, what were called the, the um, spider black spider memos in his black spidery handwriting, complaining about this, complaining about that. Tony Blair used to get really fed up with that. Um, but the whole thing is, all that changes. And the one thing that was interesting about his accession speech yesterday is him saying, yes, that will change, that now um, I am the king, I don't get involved in that, I'm above politics, and we're very lucky to have a non-political head of state, not beholden to any political party, um, and just there for, the, for to, to give advice to prime ministers, which, of course, always remains private. But the difference is, of course, we know, for example, Example, he's obsessed with the climate. He was known as a sort of potty prince who talked to pot plants. So while he may no longer intone on that, you know, what the government then chooses to do about renewables or so forth, we, we actually have this inside track on what's going on in our king's head. I rather like that. Which we never did with the Queen, no, of course. We, we never had a hint, no. did we, really? Um, and let's move on to, uh, uh, to focus on um, Prince William um, and the walkabout yesterday. This is a story inside the mail. Yeah, he released a statement. So the, the headline on the mail is, you know, a, a take from uh, the new Prince of Wales uh, statement, which was very moving and, and thought through. Uh, she was by my side at my happiest moments, and she was by my side during the saddest days of my life. I was listening yesterday, actually, to when he was at school in Windsor, he used to pop across, uh, at Eton, rather, school at Eton, he used to pop across to see his grandmother at Windsor and pick up tips. And we know he very much models his style of sort of... Um, I don't know, not royal posturing, but the, the, the way William is is modelled very much on his grandmother. And I was particularly taken with one line in that statement where he wrote, I thank her for her kindness and I thank her on behalf of my generation for providing an example of service and dignity in public life that was from a different age, but always relevant to us all. And I work a lot with war generation, those the same age as the Queen. In fact, I talked to Betty yesterday at 99. She said, I do wish they'd stop calling her everyone's grandmother. She was younger than me. You know, and there's quite a few of those women who suddenly feel, gosh, our key contemporary, the only pin-up nonagenarian, has suddenly gone and they feel a different sort of bereavement, but they do certainly have this dutiful stance, the best foot forward stance. In fact, Betty still wears those little court heels the Queen wears, determined, even if it makes her a bit unstable. And I noticed on the second last day of the Queen's life when she met Liz Truss, she was still wearing little stacked shoes. Uh, but it is really interesting how people relate to the royal family, isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, we have these amazing, big formal occasions, but it, but it is that sense of people thinking, my granny's like that, yeah. or my son's like that, or we had a bust up in our family like that. And I think that's how the royal family do make those personal connections in some ways. Like a gigantic mirror. But what's interesting about the Queen is she's been alive so long that, uh, you know, for those in the 50s, she was like the pin-up sugar pink princess. Then you move into the 60s, she was everyone's mother. And now, of course, uh, grandmother and, uh, and great-grandmother. Just incidentally, they also pick up on him calling her granny, but with an IE. Apparently, a more modern form of spelling granny. Is it really? I didn't know. By all accounts, not very modern. I didn't know, I didn't know that. <laughs> Let's move into the, the Sunday Telegraph, shall we, and Nigel? Because, of course, the state funeral, we now have the date of it. It is uh, tomorrow week, mm -hmm. Monday, the 19th of September, isn't it? And Over we're getting top, a few yes. more details, that's right. Um, yes, uh, and a number of things have obviously had to be cancelled because of what's been, go uh, because of uh, the Queen's death. 
Um, and the TUC, for instance, would have be begun their conference today, but they can't do that. They've had to cancel the conference. The Liberal Democrats are cancelling theirs. They will lose an awful lot of money on the basis of that, and people won't be able to get their hotel bookings back and so on. Nigel, when uh, are we going to start talking about but, the cost of this? Well, well, well <laughs> we, we, it'd be interesting to find out if they're talking about something like this arrangement is like doing the Olympics, but mm. in, 12, in uh, 10 days, there is going to be a With cost. A gigantic financial crisis that's the That's battery. right. But the good news is we get, the bank ho we get a bank holiday uh, on the day of the Queen's State funeral. We didn't get that when Georgia VI was there. And there's holding out the possibility we might get another bank holiday when, uh, when King Charles is, is um, uh, where the coronation happens. So we've got two bank holidays to look forward to. I mean, certainly kids would love that. But uh, uh, and all you need to do is make sure your employer will give you the day off. Schools will close, banks will close, shops will close, but not all of us will be able to actually take time off. But on the subject of the coronation, interestingly, in 1952, the Queen ascends the throne. The coronation is until the following June 53, so nearly 18 months later. One of the reasons given by Churchill was to get the bailiffs out of the house, because of course we were still rationing, and it was to save up money to have this coronation. So whether we'll um, exercise the same restraint and have one in a year or so time, of course we have a much older king, so that might be a reason to sort of crack on with it. And of course the paper is dominated by coverage of the Queen's death, and in fact I had a guest yesterday who said that uh, in France they devoted pages and pages of, of, of coverage to the Queen's death, and yet there and here we've got a cost of living crisis, haven't we? Um, Liz Truss uh, f features in the article that you've picked out here. Um, in Headline. The, is this the Mail yeah, on Sunday? It's the Mail on Sunday again. Yeah. Liz Truss to join the King on tour of the four corners of the UK to lead a nation in mourning. Now, she doesn't have to do that. Protocol doesn't stipulate that a Prime Minister uh, goes with her monarch to visit those four corners of Britain, the United Kingdom. Uh, I slightly feel a cynic in me is wondering if Liz Truss isn't piggybacking a little bit off King Charles's moment. I wonder what your thoughts are. Well, I also wonder what uh, King Charles thinks about it. I mean, it's meant to be his his tour, he's meant yeah. to be seeing all the devolved nations, uh, how keen he would, he would be with having this trust as a backseat driver, I'm not quite so sure. In terms of the Prime Minister's involvement, she will join the King as he leads the nation. You know, it's all rather sort of, you know, tiptoeing around this idea that Liz, very, very new, couldn't be more new in her premiership. And we know that actually these great royal moments, they are big national moments. Um, Tony Blair, the death of Diana, you know, really made a name for himself just four months into his own premiership with the People's Princess and slightly leading and helping, guiding the royal family. And likewise, Churchill, with the death of George VI, very famously made a valedictory speech that hit all the headlines. OK, and we've, we've only got about a minute. So we can talk about the Queen's friendships or we can talk about corgis. I know there are two other stories. Which would you like to do? Would you like to do corgis or friendships? Uh, the Queen would say they're one and the same. There is there's <laughs> no more loyal a friend. <laughs> no, go ahead with your friendship, sorry. We'll very, quickly, yeah, very quickly, yeah, very quickly. It's a Jackie Stewart, who's been a great friend of the Queen. Uh, met her through um, the Princess Royal, who uh, he became a friend of as well. Went on shooting parties with her, and he spoke on the telephone to her only two weeks ago, and so she was in fine form. He'd seen her a, a, a few weeks before that. What is interesting is, like everybody else, he won't say what they told talked about. So he talks about how wonderful she was and how nice she was, but won't reveal their private conversations. That's that's very good of him, but obviously for us we would be absolutely fascinated, wouldn't we? Anyway, we will no doubt cover the subject of Corgi so dear to the Queen's heart uh, in the later hours, but uh, for the moment, thanks both very much indeed. Uh, Tessa and Nigel, we will see you later. Do stay with us. We've got live coverage from Buckingham Palace and from Balmoral later on this morning as the Queen's coffin will begin its journey to its final resting place. It's been described as King Charles as his mother's last great journey. We'll have plenty of coverage on that throughout the day and plenty of reaction to the crowds arriving here at Buckingham Palace too. Do stay with us.